In the 1960s, voter suppression was easy to identify. It was poll taxes. It was dogs and hoses and officers with billy clubs preventing people from casting their votes. For Native Americans, it was being denied the right to vote until 1924 when they became citizens of this country they'd lived in since its inception. What voter suppression looks like in 2020 is very different. It starts with making it hard to get on the rolls and stay on the rolls, cast a ballot and have that ballot counted. That's voter suppression in 2020. My mission is to remind every American, whatever you value becomes real when we vote for people who will represent your values. And that cannot happen if voter suppression wins. We are overwhelmed by the concerns of America, fighting climate change, fighting poverty, ensuring access to education, defeating white supremacy and domestic terrorism, making sure that we have gun safety and smart gun laws. But none of these can come to fruition if we do not have the right to vote. In 2020, our mission is to make certain that we have fair and free elections across the country, especially in the 20 battleground states where we'll have presidential contest, Senate contest, and down ballot races that can change the future of American politics. Those battleground states where we know not only is the contest going to be close, but where we know voter suppression is going to be the tactic used by Republicans to hold on to power. Our mission is to set up voter protection teams in each of these states, to make certain that no matter where you are in these 20 states, if you have a question, if you need answers, or if we have to file lawsuits to protect the right to vote, we're ready to do that during the primaries by focusing on making it a fair fight we can ensure that across these 20 states and around the country that voter protection teams are ready to respond to the scourge of voter suppression that we've seen over the last 20 years. This is not a speech of concession because concession means to acknowledge an action is right, true, or proper. As a woman of conscience and faith, I cannot concede that. But my assessment is the law currently allows no further viable remedy. In 2018, I faced one of the worst examples of voter suppression. My opponent was an architect of voter suppression, but he also happened to be the Secretary of State, so he controlled the ballot. He was both the umpire and the guy at bat. And when voter suppression is real, it stops people from believing that their voices matter. We know in Georgia, tens of thousands of people were rejected when they tried to cast their ballots. But more importantly, we know that there are millions across the country who don't even believe that the right to vote is real. I want people to understand we will win. The victory for our values becomes real when we fight back. And I'm here to lead the charge to make sure we fight for the right to vote. In 2018, I did not become governor of Georgia, but I like to say that we won. And that's because as long as elections are about politicians, we're missing the point. Elections are about people. It's about our ability to stand up and say we're here and we deserve to be counted. And what we were able to do in 2018 was turn out more people of color, turn out communities that were normally disenfranchised, and build coalition with the white community for the strongest turnout across the board. I'm excited because I know we can do this. What we did worked. If we had someone fighting to end voter suppression every day, more people would find that victory possible. My mission is to remind us that this is our country. We deserve to be represented by people who respect us, who value us, and who see us. And that's why I'm excited, because we can get this work done. Success for Fair Fight 2020 looks like three things. One, it's standing up voter protection teams that are permanent in 20 states. Those battleground states that will decide the future of our country in this next election. Number two, it's encouraging people to make their voices heard by volunteering for these organizations, but also by talking to their neighbors and their friends about why they think now is the time to make their voices heard. And number three, of course, is winning the White House, taking back the Senate, winning up and down the ballot, especially state legislative races that will redraw the maps for 2021 and beyond. If we get this work done, victory looks like a transformation of our country, and that's worth fighting for. We'd love to have everyone join us at fairfight2020.org. Sign up, show up, and let us know that you're here with us.